So about six months ago now, I put out a video titled World of Warcraft is like an arcade and Final Fantasy XIV is like a theater. And what I meant by that when it comes to World of Warcraft being an arcade is that World of Warcraft can really be broken down into just three game modes, those being Mythic Plus, Raiding, and PvP. Does World of Warcraft have open world content? Technically, yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Does it have pet battles and transmog? Yes. But if you're paying a sub fee to play World of Warcraft and you are not engaging in Mythic Plus, PvP, or raiding in any capacity, you are paying to play a very, very small sliver of a game that has most of its focus on those three game modes. And if you investigate these three game modes, you come to really quickly find that only one of these is in any way, shape, or form designed in a way that is modern is, you know, shows any semblance of modern game design. And the reason why I say that is if you inspect, say, raiding. Raiding in World of Warcraft cannot be done unless you are in a party of 10 to 30 people. Unless you're playing Mythic raiding, then you're locked to strictly 20 people. And the problem with that is when you get that many people together to cooperate, everyone is a stranger. You're usually not on Discord if you're pugging this. And you are going ahead and engaging in this content. You run into a problem with difficulty. If 30 people, 10 to 30 people, are getting together to do group content that is heavily dependent on each other, you're going to have to tune the fights to the lowest common denominators or otherwise leave everyone frustrated, unable to clear, and then quitting the game. Now, of course, this changes if you're in a guild, right? If you find a guild to go ahead and prog normal or prog heroic, that changes things. However, the idea of guilds is in many ways outdated game design because raids in World of Warcraft are pretty freaking long. These take about three hours long, and, you know, raid night is typically something that you do for three hours in one sitting, maybe even twice a week. And for many people, that is no longer something that is feasible to be put on their schedule. You know, it's something that is a lot more convenient to be able to come in, play as much as you want for as long as you have, have that flexibility, and come out, right? If you're a hardcore player, Mythic Plus is there for you. I mean, I'm sorry, Mythic Raiding is there for you. But if you're not, Raiding in World of Warcraft is not a very fun experience. And that's why, recently, Blizzard for Dragonflight made it so Mythic Plus, which is the dungeons, is something that is a lot more viable for people to do without having to raid. Now, let me talk about PvP for a little bit in World of Warcraft. PvP, the big problem with PvP in World of Warcraft is that the gear is not ever, you know, synced when you're going ahead and doing it. So you could be stronger or weaker than your competitor solely based on the gear that you have. This is something that other MMOs such as Lost Ark and Final Fantasy don't take into account. World of Warcraft still has this going on with the game for PvP. And the problem with that, of course, is that if you are someone who is a bit more casual, you get severely punished you get severely punished for, you know, being able to play in a more modern way, in a more flexible way, in a way that makes more sense with your schedule, especially since MMOs nowadays are typically played by adults. PvP isn't very feasible. You know, in a game like Final Fantasy, you can just go in, do crystalline conflict as many times as you want. You don't have to worry about your gear. You go in, you are, you know, good or bad, depending on how skilled you are, and then that's it. And so this is something that World of War, it's, it's an old vestige of MMO design that is still hanging around till this very day. Now, if you take a look at Mythic Plus, Mythic Plus is the only one that has some semblance of modernity to it because you can go in with only four other people. It's not very difficult to get four people together, you know, on a whim and very quickly get to the entrance of a dungeon. It takes 20 to 40 minutes tops it's fast paced, it's fun, you know, it pushes you to your limits, you can play it hard, you can play it easy, you can play it medium because it has scale and difficulty. And you can get engaged for, you know, your 20 to 40 minutes. If you want to go again, you go again. If you don't, you're done. That's it. You know, it's more akin to a game like Overwatch 2, which is vastly more popular 
than <laughs> World of Warcraft in today's day and age because of all these, you know, all these conveniences that we have. And in many ways, they're required in today's gaming market because there are so many options and there are so many things that you can go ahead and play. And so if a game doesn't go ahead and incorporate these features with, you know, the busy lives and alternatives that people have to deal with, it's going to be hard for you to really keep up. So Mythic Plus is the only one that to some extent does keep up. Now Mythic Plus does have some problems with its design. And the thing with Mythic Plus is Blizzard tends to, you know, this is a pattern with Blizzard, put in the least amount of work to try to get as much sub time and, you know, subscription renewals from their customer base as possible. And the way this appears in Mythic Plus is they try to drag out the same eight dungeons throughout the whole expansion. So for two years, they expect their player base to play the same eight dungeons over and over and over again, right? Sure, the difficulty changes, but all that is is, you know, a little bit of a tweak on HP pools, a little bit of a tweak on how hard mechanics hit. And what that will typically do is result in a situation where people are having to use these super like sweaty min max uh, strats and like these cheeses in the game to be able to clear the content, the higher difficulties. It is not new content that you have to solve, this content that you've already solved that you're now trying to exploit. And I don't think that's very good game design at all. Now in Dragonflight, they're changing it up a little bit and they're making it so they change the dungeon pool every patch. I do think that's a lot better, you know, to change it every season. And they're still trying to get away with doing less work because instead of having eight new dungeons every single season, they're putting in four old dungeons and four new dungeons. Is this the worst idea? No, I actually think it's a relatively good idea for Blizzard to do. But even still, one season in World of Warcraft is really freaking long. A season could be six months, eight months, right? And so for me personally, when I went ahead and I played Shadowlands Season 4, doing the same dungeons over and over again was really, really fun for the first week, two weeks. Once I started getting into my third week, my fourth week of doing the same dungeon with the mobs having like one extra mechanic per the whole dungeon, you know, some affixes, it's not enough variety. You know, I've already solved this puzzle. You've, you've just shaken it up by the like smallest amount possible to try to maintain some semblance of it being fresh. That's the biggest issue with Mythic Plus. Now, of course, what I'm talking about when it comes to Final Fantasy competing in the title, of course, I'm talking about Final Fantasy is competing with WoW. What Final Fantasy is doing, what Square Enix is doing, is they're adding Criterion Dungeons. And these are going to be added into the game just a few days after me recording this video. Now, what Criterion Dungeons are, is their Final Fantasy's answer to World of Warcraft's Mythic Plus. I love Mythic Plus. Yes, it can get kind of repetitive, but if I'm subscribing to World of Warcraft, it is solely and specifically to play Mythic Plus, and I am not alone in this sentiment. A lot of ex-WoW guys who have come over to Final Fantasy will go back and, and you know, when they're talking about WoW, they're saying, yeah, but Mythic Plus was fun. Mythic Plus is, is really the last bastion for World of Warcraft in many ways. And this is something that's been missing for Final Fantasy for a long time. And I've been getting this craving myself to go ahead and do Mythic Plus. You know, I've been playing Final Fantasy. I just cleared Storm Crown's Extreme. I'm now starting to prog Savage. And, you know, it's really fun. But it requires an eight-man team. And, you know, it's not as plug-and-play as something as Mythic Plus might be. You know, it's pretty close, but it's not exactly Mythic Plus. It's not quite there, you know. There's something about having that more intimate team of four to five players that I really do crave. And now it's here. <laughs> And I was just saying to one of my friends a couple days ago, I really wish World of Warcraft was a free-to-play game. I mean, it already has all of these pretty aggressive and predatory microtransactions. If it was free-to-play, I'd be able to go in, play it for three, four hours tops, get my Mythic Plus fix in, and then go back and play Final Fantasy. Now, I don't have to do that anymore because that itch is something that Square Enix stepped up and is trying to meet. You know, they're putting in these very difficult Criterion dungeons, which are very similar to Mythic Plus. There are going to be, you know, these dungeons that are something you could go do with four players. 
that are going to be very difficult for you to clear, you know, and they have the normal criterions, which are equivalent to extreme difficulties, like an extreme trial. And then there's also the criterion savage, which is going to be savage, right? Which is very hard. Now, the way that Final Fantasy designs their encounters is in many ways a lot better than the way that Blizzard designs their encounters. And let me tell you what I mean. Going ahead and doing uh, an extreme trial or, you know, a savage tier in Final Fantasy XIV is to me, a lot like playing Elden Ring, a lot like playing Dark Souls, and a lot of people have said it's a lot like playing fighting games. And what I mean by that is you go in and you get challenged, and it's difficult, and you bang your head against the wall. But because of the way that the fights are designed, you will start to feel a sense of progress in your skill, in, in your ability, as you're banging your head against the wall at this rate, you know? due to the smaller rate sizes and due to the more scripted way that the encounters in Final Fantasy XIV are designed, you go in, you make a mistake, you go in the second time, the same thing happens again. Maybe you mis make that same mistake the second time, but now you know. You know, once we get to this part of the fight, the boss is going to do this thing. I'm going to be ready to do it. And then you do it. And then you feel that sense of progression. You know, that's a little bit less so and wow due to much larger rate sizes one. And, you know, a lot more chaotic play style where it's a lot more about your ability to be super reactive in the moment. Um, so, so you create a situation where like similar to Dark Souls, you go in. The boss is more or less going to do the same thing every time, but it's going to be very, very difficult for you to pull off. <laughs> right? So you go and you bang your head against the boss, you bang your head against the boss, you bang your head against the boss. And so they're extending the, the gameplay and the game time of the people, not through these scaling difficulties where you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're doing the same one thing, but it's taking you much, much longer to be able to actually complete that one thing. So when you do actually finish it, it's that huge sense of accomplishment. And it's not making it so you're repeating the same content. You're doing the one piece of content and you're really mastering it in a way that is not, uh, you know, exploitative or that tries to cheese mechanics. It's just you having to get good enough to do the mechanics. And uh, it doesn't seem like Square Enix wants to put a whole ton of replayability into Criterion Dungeons and that's good. Because any time you do the same thing for too long, you will eventually burn out. And Square Enix has a history of, you know, being, and especially now since Endwalker, because they have a lot more funding than they ever had before, they, they have this tendency with patch 6.0, 6.1, 6.2, and now 6.25, which is coming out in a couple days, which is going to introduce these Criterion Dungeons, they have this tendency to, instead of trying to take the smallest amount of content and extend it as long as possible, they just pump new content. They just give you new things to do, like Island Sanctuary, like Golden Saucer, like Heaven on High, like Palace of the Dead. They just give you more things to do, like the like the summer fair event where you had to jump up the thing and it was like Jump King. They give you more things. And when you have more things to do, this makes it so you burn out a lot less. And when you have a situation where they're putting Criterion Dungeons in the game, that will probably take you a long time to clear. And then once you cleared, you might not have a ton of incentive to go ahead and clear it a second time. But instead of them focusing on making it so you feel compelled to, you know, do it over and over again just for, you know, external rewards instead of internal fun, what they're going to do instead is more likely prepare for the next Criterion prepare for the next piece of content at at the new criterion right and that's a much healthier way to design their game and so the one thing that i till this very day get an itch for get an itch to subscribe to world of warcraft again for mythic plus is a feature that final fantasy 14 steam seems to notice that you know there is a demand for they seem to notice that this is something that a lot of people like world of warcraft for and they said, you know what? Why don't we take a try at this ourselves? And historically, every time <laughs> Final Fantasy has stolen or, you know, has learned from World of Warcraft, they typically end up one-upping what the WoW team did. And that's all I had to say for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.